Hi everyone, I'm Lexi Underwood, and today I am joined by three incredible people. Um, I'm so honored to be a part of this conversation. Some of you all may know me from Hulu's Little Fires Everywhere. Um, if not, all good. But today we are here to talk about um, mental health specifically. So I'm going to hop in and take it over to my three amazing guests. Maida, would you like to start? Hi, I'm Maida and I use she, her pronouns. And I'm a 19 year old 4 h -er from Seattle, Washington. A lot of the work that I do is focused on supporting LGBTQ plus youth in 4-H, and I had the honor of being named the 2021 Youth in Action Healthy Living Pillar winner, and I'll pass it to Anjali. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Gitanjali Rao. I go by Anjali. I'm 15 years old, and I'm going to be a junior in high school, and I'm a 4 h -er in Denver, Colorado. And I love using science and technology as a catalyst for social change in our world and looking at how we can research for the better as well. One of my latest innovations is a app to help detect and prevent cyberbullying at an early stage. Hey, everyone. I'm Aiden Spencer from Oklahoma County, Oklahoma. I'm 19 and I'm the 2021 Youth in Action STEM Pillar winner. Most of my 4-H career has focused on STEM education and providing equitable access for all students of all ages and all backgrounds. So let's hop in. Um, the past year has been incredibly overwhelming to say the least, full of ups and downs um, between COVID-19, the events in the news and everything else that has taken place. I know that for me, balancing all of those things plus school and my mental health, um, it was pretty tricky. Um, so for you all, how has um, the pandemic impacted your mental health? Yeah, so in the past year, I graduated high school and I went on to my first year of college. It was really hard for me because I was entering a new environment with lots of new people and I had to learn how to navigate it alone a lot of the time because most everything was online. So it was hard for me to make new connections and really get immersed in the college environment. So I guess for me personally, with the pandemic as a whole, it was difficult to do school online every single day, right? Um, and I was obviously my sophomore year of high school, and it wasn't something that I was used to or anyone else was used to. And at the same time, too, social media was increasingly being used as almost like this toxic platform, right? Mm -hmm. And more than anything, it was difficult to balance my time during the pandemic. And I guess help others recognize that this wasn't normal. But at the end of the day, it was important for me to also recognize that our world is changing and we need to grow up with it and be flexible with it as well. And I used the extra time I ha had on my hands to share my innovation process with the world and also launch my anti-cyberbullying service. So I really made, I guess, almost made do of it, but also took the opportunity to my advantage to do something to help and benefit the community for the better. Yeah. I can totally relate to everything that you all said, whether it's feeling disconnected from people, especially, um, and, and watching the, event, the events unfold in the news and in social media has certainly been stressful. Um, I've grieved the physical deaths of some around me, the deaths of heroes that I didn't personally know, people like George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, um, and relationships with people that I absolutely never thought would end. I've cried, I've laughed, I've been happy, I've been motivated, and some days I have not been motivated at all. And so I think that one way that has kind of helped me to stay resilient um, through this past year has simply to be kind to myself. Um, I try to allow myself to feel every emotion, understand them, but I try also not to let them consume my every move and suck all the life from me. And within this past year, I've absolutely realized that joy is an act of resistance, but at the same time, joy is fleeting. Um, so practices like yoga and meditation, they really helped me stay present in the moment and understand that all of this is temporary and one day you'll be able to say, I'm okay and truly mean it. So can you all tell me about a time where you were going through a tough time with your mental health and how you were able to build resilience through it? 
Yeah, for sure. I can kick this off. Um, when first diving into my personal innovation journey, I was often overlooked for my abilities because of my age and the way that I looked, right? And yeah. more than anything, people feared that I wasn't competent because of my age, my race, and my gender. And frankly, I don't look like your typical scientist or innovator, right? And people believed that I wasn't able to take my first step to tackle world problems because I wasn't the same as everyone else. And at that time, I almost had the sense of self-doubt pour over me. And I wasn't able to recognize that it's me who basically defines my passions and what I love to do when it's not up to others. And through that, I've learned to basically motivate myself, be persistent and take risks and recognize that, you know, you're who you want to be, right? Not what someone tells you to be, especially when it comes to innovation and problem solving. You make a difference in this world through your own words and through the way that you put yourself out there. And really what you're doing is, think about it this way, right? Because I'm on social media, because I work with students, um, I'm a trailblazer for everybody else who may look like me out there. So that's something I've been telling myself recently. I think that, you know, my mental health has been affected by many things in my life. And I think that we need to recognize that, you know, events from your past, sometimes when you're very young, they can carry the trauma through throughout your life if you don't address and you know, deal with it. Uh, so perhaps the lowest point in my life was dealing with the aftermath of a house fire and a car accident that left me in a back brace and let my whole world kind of just crumble before my eyes. Everything that we owned, my, me and my family owned, was gone. Um, and it took me a long time to recognize the mental health crisis that I was going through. But once I accepted I had a problem, I started to find ways to cope with it. When I joined 4-H, I learned that helping my community and you know spending time with others to make it a better place really, really helped me. I think civic engagement and connecting with your community really gives you a sense of, of purpose and can really help you uh, learn to, to work through not only some of the issues that you've been going, going through, like not feeling worthy enough of support, but you can also help other people that may be feeling the same thing. So I think that you know, working with one's community is very important and giving, one, giving yourself some space to really you know, figure some things out is also a benefit. I would say one of the most difficult times for me is when I was in middle school. I was really struggling with anxiety and selective mutism and kind of finding where I fit in. At this point, I had the opportunity to join a 4-H club, and I also got really immersed in my dance community. And I had the opportunity to connect with more people that looked like me. I wasn't the only person of color anymore, which made me feel really welcomed and valued and in a place where I could truly be myself. That's really awesome. I'm so glad that that 4-H um, has been um, just a source, especially for all three of you all and all the other 4-Hers um, to come and really talk about how they're feeling and um, to also see themselves represented in that room is so incredibly important. Um, what are some tips that you all can share to other teens who are trying to stay resilient during difficult times? A tip that I have is to look for your people, find your people, create really strong connections, and make sure you have people that will support you and you can lean on when you're struggling. Um, it's, it's so important to have places where you can be yourself. I also would say try to find an activity that helps you to relax and clear your mind. For me, I really love listening to music. So kind of find something that works for you to help you decompress. I love music. I always say like music is my first language. So when you are feeling down, what musicians or songs um, do you listen to to help you? I really love music with really strong confident artists and I would say some of my favorites would have to be Beyonce and Pink. Awesome. I love Pink and Beyonce too, so we relate. Um, I, I agree with Maida that challenges are much, much easier to navigate. When you have a, so, when you have a solid social support network, and talking to others always helps. And I think that we need to realize that when we're going through things and we are 
you know, trying to be resilient, sometimes we're going to make mistakes and we're going to need time to focus on ourselves before focusing on other people. Uh, we're, I think in the day to day world, we're always on 100% of the time with go, go, go. But we need to realize that sometimes we just need to take a minute, assess ourselves and know that it's okay to breathe and make a few mistakes along the way. Mm. I love that. I love your answer. Um, so there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to our generation specifically. Um, what are some misconceptions that you all have heard about teen mental health and what do you wish that people knew? Well, I think sometimes, you know, we need a space and, and time to understand our mental state before we act. You know, we all have a habit of wanting to put our best foot forward so we can be there for our friends and family. But sometimes we need to remember that our mental health is not meant for others. It's, it's meant for us. I love that. Anjali? Ooh, for me, I guess it's this idea that um, it's not something that stays constant, right? Mental health varies with situations and experiences. And I think it's really important for others to understand it and accept it. Um, and it differs, it differs for everyone. And um, we're not all carbon copies of each other, which makes it even better. As a queer person of color, I am often in places where I'm thinking about concerns that are specific to these identities. And I would say that one of the most important things to notice is that LGBTQ plus youth are at a much higher risk for experiencing mental health issues. And I wish people knew that even just respecting names and pronouns of youth is correlated to a decrease in depression, suicidal ideation, and suicidal behavior. It may seem like something that's super small and doesn't make much of a difference, but it really shows them that you care and you were there to support them. That is a really great piece of advice. I mean, I'm sure as a lot of people of color growing up, especially um, microaggressions, those are a big thing, and um, they impacted my mental health quite a lot growing up. Um, so I love the fact that you're being so incredibly vocal, especially about um, microaggressions and about respecting people's pronouns, because um, sometimes we don't necessarily think of those things. We think of it as more of a bigger picture. It's if I'm, you know, if I'm not blatantly homophobic or if I'm not blatantly racist, then that doesn't make me one. Um, but it's the little things like that that still sting and hurt. So thank you for you using your voice and platform to speak up. Um, okay, so what can adults do for young people um, to stay resilient as they re-enter a post-pandemic world and deal with uncertainties of going back to school? Yeah, and I think really in my perspective, belief is sometimes the number one thing to keep a student going, right? Mm -hmm. It's important for, I guess, you to know that adults are there for them and are willing to help them through this transition as well. And don't allow for you personal feelings and uncertainties to be invalidated. Everyone has their own situations, their, you know, their own mental health kind of, their idea of mental health, like we were talking about earlier. And I think it's really important for adults to be able to support that. Well, I think adults can play an important role in teens' mental health. Uh, we have all had so much anxiety this year, this past year. Like, I can't even begin to tell you. But <laughs> understanding and being patient is what we all need during this transition. Wholeheartedly agree. I mean, I feel like there is, in a sense, a rush to go back to normalcy. Um, and I have been feeling incredibly overwhelmed because you spend a whole year in your house and then it's all of a sudden it's time to go back into the real world. And so I think that if any adult is watching this, if what they could possibly do, I think research and understand, think of Think of you when you were in our position, if you had to go through through a pandemic. I mean, you already have to go through things like high school, middle school, trying to graduate, finals, friendships, relationships, all of that type of stuff. You're trying to juggle all of it at the same time um, that a pandemic is happening. But this has been such a treat, y'all. I wish that we had more time to talk, but thank you so much for y'all's time today. For more resources on social emotional learning and mindfulness activities, please visit 4hathome on 4h.org.